Different rocks and sediments have different properties that make them unique. Two important properties to understand are porosity and permeability. These tell us how much space is available in a material and how well fluid can move through it. Porosity and permeability are essential to understanding the availability of groundwater and the flow of groundwater contaminants, production of oil and gas, and potential for underground storage of gases and liquids. Porosity is a measurement of the empty space in a material. In soil or rock, there is empty space between the individual particles. Most of our groundwater is actually stored in these tiny spaces. A material like sand has large grains that don't fit together very closely. This leaves a lot of space between the grains for air, water, or other liquids and gases to fill up. A grain of silt might be 25 times larger than a grain of clay, and a grain of sand may be 20 times larger than the silt. At this scale, the clay becomes nearly invisible, and zooming out to the size of gravel, the clay disappears completely. The shape and sorting of the grains are important factors in how porous the rock or sediment will be. Particles of uniform size, what we call well sorted, have more pore space available than poorly sorted grains or grains of varying sizes because smaller particles can fill in the spaces between the larger grains. Even if a rock or sediment has a lot of empty space to store water, the spaces also need to be connected so that water can flow through them. Permeability measures how easily fluids can flow through a material, or how well connected the pore spaces are. Low porosity usually results in low permeability because if there aren't very many pore spaces, it'll be harder to find a path through them. However, high porosity does not always indicate high permeability. For example, clay can have very high porosity, often more than 50%, but the spaces are small and isolated, making it very difficult for water or anything else to move through. One way to visualize the connected pore space within a rock is with a bike pump model. To use these cores, you'll connect a bike pump to the top of the core and then fully submerge it in water in a beaker. From there, you can push air through the core using the bike pump. And this can give you an idea of what that interconnected space looks like in the rock. So this is a pretty well cemented limestone, so this rock does take a little bit of effort to push this air through and not too many bubbles come out. This next one is a fractured limestone, has some pore space but not well interconnected aside from where the fractures are, so most of the air bubbles are going to be coming out of those cracks or larger holes. This next one is a very porous, well interconnected limestone. Even before pumping air through it, just putting the rock in the water, you'll see a lot of air coming out already. And once you do push air through the core with the bike pump, lots of bubbles will come out of those pore spaces. And it's very easy to push air through this rock. And lastly, we've got a sandstone. So the pore space in this sandstone is smaller, but there's still a lot of pore space. So with the sandstone, you'll get a lot of smaller bubbles, but still a good amount of them. So still well interconnected, lots of pore space. So you'll see a lot of air coming out and this one is fairly easy to pump air through as well. Rocks that have the pore space to store fluids and the permeability to allow the fluids to move are called reservoirs. An aquifer is a type of reservoir where the sediment or rock is saturated with water and it has permeability to allow that water to readily flow into wells or springs. Sand, gravel, and sandstone are examples of materials that make good aquifers because they have both high porosity and high permeability. Another type of reservoir is an oil or gas reservoir. Like an aquifer, an oil or gas reservoir needs to be porous enough to contain a significant amount of oil or gas and permeable enough to recover it. Oil and gas reservoirs are usually sandstones or fractured shales and carbonates. Reservoirs can also be used to store fluids. Natural gas, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen may all be stored in underground reservoirs. In addition to having the permeability and porosity necessary for storage, 
These reservoirs also need to have a cap rack with very low permeability to prevent the fluid from moving out of the reservoir. Shale, anhydrite, and salt are common cap rocks. Porosity and permeability are the most significant physical properties for any type of reservoir. Whether we're looking at a groundwater aquifer, a hydrocarbon reservoir, or an underground storage reservoir, the rock or sediment needs to have enough space to store the fluid and enough connectedness for the fluid to move through it.